kind of terrifying mutant requires the combined effort of three special ability users to tackle. To ensure absolute success, I had to call in two helpers. Chun Lei was already restless at home and arrived early at the riverside to wait. Seeing me approach, Chun Lei hurriedly waved. I am somewhat helpless regarding Chun Lei. We agreed to meet at 8, but he called at 6 to say he had arrived. I reached for the snow off-road vehicle and said, Get in the car quickly. Have you been freezing here all this time? After I turned on the heating, Chun Lei immediately relaxed and asked, You mentioned yesterday about going to save someone. Is that person a relative or a friend? She must be very important to you. I thought to myself that Yang Xinxin's computer skills are indeed very important to me now. But before I could respond, Chun Lei started his non-stop chatter, seemingly wanting to recount every trivial event of his life. Su Lily from our village must be secretly in love with me. The way she looks at me is different from others, probably because I saved her father last time. She thinks I am a man worth entrusting her life to. She must have a secret crush on me. But Su Lily is shy and doesn't dare to confess. Do you think I should make a move? I was exasperated. If it weren't for this guy's usefulness, I would have wanted to kick him out of the car. I quickly changed the subject. What do the people in your village think of me now? I asked intentionally. Sure enough, Chun Lei suddenly fell silent, his face turning complex. He hesitated for a long time without a clear answer. I thought to myself that I had nearly wiped out half of the young and middle-aged population of his village. The villagers must absolutely despise me. If it weren't for the fear of my power, they would definitely seek revenge. These were words Chun Lei obviously couldn't say, and my ears were finally at peace. Soon, a snowmobile appeared ahead. I hurriedly got out of the car to greet him. Uncle Yu, you look in great spirits. Seems like you and Zhou Jaime are living quite comfortably. Uncle Yu raised his hand and said, I also feel a huge change in my body. My physical and mental strength is even stronger than when I was 20. After some pleasantries, I introduced the two to each other. Surprisingly, all three of them turned out to be individuals with special abilities. In this early stage of the apocalypse, having even one awakened person was already a rarity, let alone three. Uncle Yu couldn't help but ask, what kind of opponent requires the combined effort of three of us with special abilities? I gestured for them not to worry, explaining, we're just going to a school to rescue a female student. I managed to contact her yesterday. She's currently at Azure Sky Academy. However, something's off there. I think I heard mutant creatures. To ensure absolute success, I called you two to join me. Chun Lei immediately caught on to a key point. Mutant creatures, not mutated humans. I looked at them seriously and said, who said only humans can mutate? With the diversity of species in Heavenly Sea City and the presence of various pets and seafood like fish and crabs in the market, any cellular organism has the potential to mutate. Uncle Yu expressed his doubts. Do you know what it is? Something even you can't handle? I reassured them. There's no need to be overly worried. Based on the sounds I heard on the phone yesterday, this mutant is not human. Even if it's a mutated human, it would likely be in a frenzied state. Those kinds of sounds couldn't possibly be made by a normal human's vocal cords. However, with the three of us teaming up, no matter what kind of terrifying creature it is, it won't be able to harm us. With that, the three of us drove towards Azure Sky Academy. Meanwhile, at Azure Sky Academy, thick snow had already covered the entire campus, with only the rooftops of some tall buildings visible. In the gymnasium, a group of surviving students were exhausted from the continuous encounter with a terrifying monster. Some started to blame Yang Xinxin, who was in a wheelchair. More and more students are dying. Why are you, the cripple, still alive and well? The terrifying creature appeared unpredictably, and the teacher who had been protecting them always took special care of Yang Xinxin. Gradually, all the students started to see her as a burden, even blaming her for the deaths of their classmates. A female student, in despair, exclaimed, Do we even have a chance to survive? From over a hundred survivors, after the snow disaster, only about 40 remained. Counting the names of their departed classmates, everyone felt an unbearable chill in their hearts. At this moment, a girl with big wavy hair caught sight of Yang Xinxin in her wheelchair, and a strong sense of disgust arose within her. Why have so many died? Yet this crippled waist remains unharmed, she yelled, pointing at Yang Xinxin. Because teacher Liang was particularly affectionate towards Yang Xinxin, always ensuring she was taken along during every escape, the others saw this as an opportunity to vent their frustrations. Yang Xinxin quickly became the target of everyone's resentment. Some even suggested throwing her out to feed the monsters. Although they realized that even if Yang Xinxin died, the monsters would not spare them. They thought that if the monsters appeared again, leaving her behind to attract them could at least give her sacrifice some meaning. The class monitor, feeling helpless, said, Everyone, please stop. Teacher Liang cares for each of us equally, and always hesitates to leave anyone behind. But still, more and more of us are dying. Even if Yang Xinxin dies, how can you be sure that you won't be the next one? A girl with a ponytail stepped out from the crowd, a strange smile on her face. She walked up to Yang Xinxin, looking down at her. Yang Xinxin, seemingly frightened of this person, stuttered, Zhang Mingning, what do you want to do? Zhang Mingning leaned down with a venomous look in her eyes, and said to Yang Xinxin, you crippled waste, just go die, stop dragging us down. Yang Xinxin was stunned by this scene, her eyes wide in bewilderment, and tears uncontrollably started to flow. Instead of stepping in to condemn Zhang 
meaning, the crowd around them began clapping and cheering. At this moment, a short-haired girl quickly stood in front of Yang Xinxin. She was Yang Xinxin's best friend, Liu Karen, who had been pushing Yang Xinxin's wheelchair all this time. Xiang Mingning, we are all classmates. Don't go too far. Xiang Mingning, however, laughed wildly and pointed accusingly at Liu Karen. What are you? Someone who got in through connections doesn't deserve to talk to me. Liu Karen, infuriated, retorted, at a time like this, your family's money is just worthless paper. Where do you get your sense of superiority from? This only angered Zhang Mingning further, who snapped back, shut up, no matter what, you lowly people don't have the right to talk back to me. She then turned her fury back to Yang Xinxin, you cripple, it's because of a burden like you that we lost so many classmates, you might as well end it yourself. Yang Xinxin kept her head low, silent under the vicious curses of her classmates. Liu Karen continued to argue, Yang Xinxin is a human too, she has the right to live, the deaths of the other students have nothing to do with her. A girl with an innocent look then slowly spoke up, her disability does indeed make her a burden for everyone, so Zhang Mingning does have a point. The students began to argue among themselves again, some even accusing Yang Xinxin of morally blackmailing them because of her disability. Really, a pitiful woman. We've been dragging this dead weight for so long. It's about time you found a place to die. Hearing this, Liu Karen angrily countered, I have been the one taking care of Yang Xinxin all this time. None of you have done anything for her. What right do you have to blame her? Zhang Mingning mockingly said, at least Yang Xinxin is a distinguished young lady from a prominent family. You are just a student who got in through connections. If it weren't for her disability, she wouldn't even bother with someone like you. She's just using you to satisfy her twisted sense of superiority. Liu Karen retorted, Yang Xinxin is not like what you think. Meanwhile, Yang Xinxin remained silent, her head bowed, as the incessant accusations gave her a splitting headache and tears continued to flow. At that moment, a girl with delicate features stepped forward from the crowd. Let's all say less. At a time like this, we should be more united and help each other. Shin Niaoka, the class committee secretary from a distinguished family, said, although you are indeed a bit of trouble, we will not abandon you. I hope you won't hold a grudge against everyone. Let's continue to be friends. She extended her right hand sincerely. Suddenly, there was a loud clang. A metal window was pushed down from above, and a monstrous hand, several meters long, reached in through the window. The claw grabbed a student's head and easily lifted him up. The gymnasium erupted in screams of terror. Everyone desperately ran towards the back of the gym. Before the student could cry for help, he was swiftly pulled out of the window. The creature, a large cat-like beast, licked its blood-red tongue and then put the student in its mouth. Everyone was petrified, running for their lives towards the back of the gym, leaving Yang Xinxin behind, with only Liu Karen struggling to push her wheelchair. When they reached the back door, they found it frozen shut, impossible to open. Some students were so anxious they wet themselves. Everyone's face turned pale with fear. The beast, now inside the gym, played with the male student in its mouth, before biting off his head with a crunch. The girls, witnessing this scene, were completely stunned and collapsed to the ground. The beast threw the remains aside and roared menacingly at the crowd, as if sizing up its prey. The students realized that the creature before them was a highly intelligent monster. It had taken the opportunity to attack them while the teacher protecting them had gone to find food. All the students were cornered in one part of the gym, too scared to fight back. Suddenly, someone unexpectedly pushed Yang Xinxin's wheelchair out into the open. Caught off guard, Yang Xinxin fell to the ground. Liu Karen wanted to help her up, but was paralyzed with fear and unable to move. The big cat-like creature was indeed attracted by this action and slowly approached Yang Xinxin. The student who had pushed her wheelchair, seeing an opportunity, tried to run towards the door. However, the creature, having observed everything, revealed a mocking smile and swiftly swatted the fleeing student with its paw, causing severe internal injuries with what seemed like a gentle strike. This student, born into a prominent family, had always been seen as a winner in life, but now faced a tragic and sudden end. Barely alive, he called for help, but no one dared to come forward. Liu Karen, mustering her courage, went to help Yang Xinxin up. The others realized that while Li Yong had tried to run and was killed, Yang Xin Xin, who appeared to be lying still, had survived the attack. It seemed the monster targeted moving objects first. Knowing they couldn't just play dead, the students decided they had to alert Teacher Liang to come back, or they would all perish. While the creature was preoccupied with Li Yong, not killing him outright, but playing with him like a toy, the class monitor instructed everyone to scatter and run. However, just as they were about to seize the opportunity to escape, the dying Li Yong, seeing everyone abandoning him, cried out in despair, They are here, they are trying to run. Then, with a spiteful roar, he yelled, If I'm going to die, Die, you're all going down with me. The sudden shout from Li Yong indeed caught the big cat's attention. It swiftly turned and knocked down two more boys. Li Yong, with blood in his mouth, laughed maniacally. If I have to die, we all die together. You all will be my funeral companions. While the big cat was distracted by these two groups, the class monitor, along with two others, dashed out of the gymnasium. Their faces were filled with relief, having narrowly escaped death. The two accompanying the class monitor complimented him. It's all thanks to your smart strategy of letting others distract the creature, giving us a chance to escape. The class monitor, while running,
explained, I noticed that the creature seemed to be a mutated cat. Cats play with their prey before eating, and unless they are extremely hungry, they aren't much interested in dead prey. Seeing the class monitor escape, other students also tried to flee. However, the big cat's tail, over 10 meters long, whipped out with a loud crack, brutally striking one of them. Several girls collapsed in emotional breakdown, screaming in pain and terror. Just then, an angry shout resonated, you damned wild cat, don't harm my students. Hearing this, the students who had lost all hope suddenly saw a glimmer of light. It was Teacher Liang. Teacher Liang had finally returned, wielding an ancient longsword and charging fearlessly towards the big cat. The cat let out a piercing screech, dodging her attack. Teacher Liang's eyes filled with immense sorrow upon seeing the bodies of the students, but considering the safety of those still inside the gymnasium, she decided to lure the creature outside to avoid further casualties. Teacher Liang was a top-level swordmaster, having served as a personal bodyguard to a leader's wife, and her strength had only increased after awakening her special abilities. As a specially appointed teacher at Azure Sky Academy, she had voluntarily taken on the responsibility of protecting the students. The big cat seemed to understand Liang Yu's intent and, grabbing the body of a student in its jaws, quickly disappeared outside the gymnasium. Holding her sword with both hands, Liang Yu cautiously walked towards the door, well aware of the big cat's intelligence and the need not to underestimate it. Stepping outside, she found that the creature had vanished, leaving only a chaotic trail of massive footprints. It seemed to have moved away, and Liang Yu couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, though a wave of indescribable exhaustion washed over her. In the two months since the apocalypse began, more than half of the students had died. If not for her fortuitous awakening of special abilities, she would have lost this deadly game of cat and mouse long ago, and everyone, including herself, would have been dead. Liang Yu threw the hard-earned food in front of the students. Class monitor, please divide the food, she said, then found a corner to sit down wearily. She was extremely tired. The majority of the school had perished since the apocalypse, and she had been protecting the surviving students from monster attacks while also fetching food from the school's warehouse. The strain had taken its toll. At this moment, Zhang Mingming lashed out at Yang Xinxin again. Why are you still alive? You're the most useless one here. Liu Karen stepped up once more, indignantly responding, Can you please be reasonable? What does the monster attack have to do with Yang Xinxin? But Zhang Mingming was relentless. I just can't stand her. The cripple. What about it? Shen Miaoka tried to calm things down. Let's all say less. She suggested, taking a portion of the food to give to Yang Xinxin. But before she could hand it over, Zhang Mingming knocked it to the ground and snapped viciously, giving her food is a waste. The school's food supply is limited. This cripple will be eaten by the monster sooner or later anyway. It's better to save the food for the rest of us. Teacher Liang Yu, who had been resting with her eyes closed, slowly opened them. She had become accustomed to the conflicts among the students and was too exhausted to deal with these trivial matters. As long as there was no loss of life, she had to conserve her energy to focus on the mutated big cat. Suddenly, a girl, overwhelmed with despair, screamed, Stop arguing. It's all pointless. I've realized we're all going to die. We're just food that the monster is keeping. It comes periodically to pick a few of us to eat, never killing too many at once because it prefers its prey alive. There's no hope left in this world, and no rescue is coming. The class monitor looked at the food in her hand. I don't believe it. There must be hope. We are the future elites of society. We won't just die here. He looked at the snow-covered rooftops. If we can just contact the outside world, my dad will surely send someone to rescue us. At that moment, the sound of a car engine broke the silence. The three special ability users, following the navigation, had finally arrived at Azure Sky Academy after an hour. As I got out of the car, I drew my pistol, reminding the others to stay alert. Uncle Yu, a former soldier and the eldest of the three, felt it was his duty to protect the others. He stood at the forefront, his physique the strongest among them, but faced with the snow-covered campus, it was impossible to determine where the person they were supposed to rescue was. I tried contacting Yang Xinxin on my phone, but there was no signal. Then, I suggested to the others, this school spans 3,000 acres. According to the 3D map, there should still be high-rise buildings visible above the snow. Let's get back in the car and search slowly. Uncle Yu's suggestion to split up for efficiency was met with my caution. There's no need to rush. I shook my head. She survived two months already. A little longer won't hurt. It's safer for us to stay together. We continued to search the area by car and soon discovered a visible spire, likely the school's astronomy center, which was some distance from the cafeteria and dormitories. Chun Lei speculated, they're probably hiding in a lecture hall or gymnasium. Those places are more spacious and have enough oxygen. Plus, there's the risk of snow collapsing the roofs. I pondered. During the call, there was mention of a gymnasium and cafeteria, but this campus is huge, with several cafeterias and gymnasiums. The search might be quite challenging. While I was deep in thought, Chun Lei excitedly shouted, Zhang, over here. We might be able to get in. He used his abilities to clear the observatory's skylight, and then crawled inside. Zhang, there's a lot of astronomical equipment here. Should we collect it? I was somewhat exasperated. We're here to rescue people, not collect supplies. But since we're here, we might as well store it in my extra-dimensional space. Chun Lei, encouraged, worked with Uncle 
enable you to enter through the window. Just then, I felt a sudden chill behind me, like being watched by a beast. I immediately raised my gun, ready for combat. A giant creature, over 10 meters tall, appeared on the snowy field, its eyes fixed on me, seemingly ready to pounce at any moment. We stood off for several seconds, but I didn't sense any intent to kill from it. In the midst of my contemplation, Chun Lei and Uncle Yu emerged from the snow, intending to ask me for some ropes to access the observatory. Chun Lei, upon seeing the monstrous creature, instinctively unleashed his ice-based abilities. Countless ice spikes formed and hurtled towards the creature. My attempt to stop him was too late. The snow was Chun Lei's element, and his attack was swift and decisive. The ice spikes hit the creature, eliciting a pain screech. Enraged, the creature lunged at Chun Lei with incredible speed, belying its massive size. I immediately activated my abilities, covering my body in a protective layer and enhancing my speed. Leaping into the air, I fired three shots at the creature's head with my gun. Surprisingly, the bullets, even armor-piercing ones, barely did any damage, sparking off its hide. As the creature neared Chun Lei, Uncle Yu stepped forward, his body radiating a golden light as his muscles expanded, transforming him into a towering figure. He delivered a powerful punch to the creature's head, causing the ice beneath him to crack. The beast's head twisted almost 90 degrees, and it staggered back, letting out a pain meow. Realizing we were dealing with a mutated giant cat, I switched to a sniper rifle. The creature's defense was extraordinary, its fur-like steel spikes, rendering the handgun ineffective. The beast, having taken a punch from Uncle Yu, turned and charged at me. I raised my sniper rifle and fired. The creature, sensing danger, couldn't dodge fast enough and was hit squarely on the cheek. Now thoroughly enraged, the creature's killing intent surged, and it slowly approached me with a twisted expression. Then, unexpectedly, it curled into a massive ball and rolled towards me at high speed. Stunned by this unexpected move, I couldn't help but exclaim in shock. What in the world is this tactic? As the mutated cat charged towards me with incredible speed, I quickly opened a dimensional portal, intending to trap it in my extra-dimensional space where even the mightiest would be worn down by the static world inside. However, I underestimated the creature's acute sense of danger. It detected the threat and, with a swift jump, evaded my attack, then darted towards a snow pile, leaving behind several dark holes in the snow. Chun Lei and Uncle Yu hurried over. John, are you alright? I raised my sniper rifle, keeping an eye on the cat. This creature is cunning. Be careful. Suddenly, the cat let out a few piercing cries, sounding almost like cursing, laden with a high degree of animosity. Uncle Yu, slightly bewildered, remarked, this beast seems to be cursing, and it's the kind with a high fuck content. The three of them were speechless. Then, they saw the big cat turn around, wiggle its butt, and it disappeared right into the snow. How did it vanish so suddenly? Uncle Yu wondered aloud. Chun Lei, equally astonished, speculated, could this creature possess space-related abilities too? I lowered my sniper rifle thoughtfully. Unlikely. If it had space abilities, it would have used them earlier. I'm also very sensitive to spatial fluctuations. It seems the cat just ran away. Approaching the spot where the cat disappeared, we realized it had burrowed into the ground. Chun Lei, looking serious, said, it seems the person we're trying to rescue encountered this creature, but it's strong and seemingly intelligent. How did ordinary people survive until now? John, are you sure about your information? My contemplation was deepened by Chun Lei's analysis. Even as a special ability user, he had nearly been overpowered by the creature. Considering its massive size and the consequent amount of food it would require, it seemed unlikely it could have survived this long by solely preying on the people at the school. But there's a puzzling detail. The creature didn't show hostility at first. It was provoked by your ice attack. It seems its intelligence has evolved, possibly to a level comparable to humans. We looked at the large burrows, speculating, perhaps these tunnels are what allowed air circulation underground, enabling survivors to avoid suffocation. With this in mind, I stood up. Let's go down and check. Chun Lei was alarmed. Go down there? That's its territory. I looked at him with a hint of disdain. Aren't you an ice ability user? Snow is your element. If that cat dares attack, just use your powers to bury it alive. Chun Lei, embarrassed, replied, right, I forgot about my abilities. We then jumped down into the cavern, finding an extensive network of tunnels under the snow, suggesting the creature had indeed been living there for a long time. With the complex network of tunnels, Chun Lei worried about getting lost, but I took out a box of colored pencils to mark our path. Uncle Yu sniffed a faint scent of blood. This must be the smell from that creature. Chun Lei, hesitant again, suggested, let's search in areas with less of that smell. I rolled my eyes at him. If you're scared, go back. We're three ability users. There's nothing to fear. If we encounter it, it's likely to be the one running away. I then took out a gleaming golden pistol, a desert eagle, one of the most powerful handguns in the world, and loaded it with ammunition. Uncle Yu, the veteran, recognized it at a glance. This is the famous desert eagle, one of the most powerful handguns in the world today. Its lethality is almost ten times that of a regular police handgun. This is a limited edition, custom ordered by Wang Siming for a hefty price. Its kinetic energy is comparable to a sniper rifle. Uncle Yu, your tracking skills are strong. Let's follow the scent of blood. If it's hunting, it will be near living people. Finding it should lead us to the location of the survivors. At this moment, Chun Lei still had a face full of 
little fear. The power of his special ability did not make his courage any bigger. I looked at this timid fat man with a look of contempt. Stand at the back then. What are you afraid of? If we do encounter it, just use your ice abilities to trap it. We'll handle the rest. But we need to gauge its intentions first. If it remains passive, fine. If it attacks, we take it down without hesitation. My words seemed to reassure Chun Lei a bit. Meanwhile, inside the gymnasium of Azure Sky Academy, Lian Yu had been vigilantly guarding the students for three days and nights, wary of another attack by the giant cat. Aware that the creature was lurking nearby, she knew that leaving her post would expose her students to imminent danger. Pushed to her physical limits after three days without food, she realized that they couldn't continue this way. Starvation posed a greater threat than the creature itself. While she was deep in thought, the class monitor and Shinyaka approached her. Teacher Lian, shouldn't you go out and find some food? We're all starving, the class monitor said. Shinyaka, looking pitiful, added, You are our only hope for survival. You can't rest anymore. If we don't freeze to death, we'll die of hunger. She fought to keep her emotions in check, reminding herself that as a teacher, she should not lose her temper with her students. Taking a deep breath, she struggled to stand up despite her exhaustion. What if the creature attacks while I'm gone? She asked them. Shinyaka, frowning slightly, urged, That's why you must be quick this time and come back as soon as possible. The class monitor interjected, holding back Shinyaka and speaking calmly. Teacher Liang, I have a plan. We will do our best to protect the other students. To himself, the class monitor harbored contempt for Liang Yu's self-sacrificing attitude. At this point, the teacher still wants to play the saint, protecting students. If it were me, I wouldn't care about the life or death of others. I could have all the school's stored food to myself, but it's also a blessing to have someone like her around. Otherwise, I might have died a long time ago. Shin Miaoka pleaded with a desperate look. Teacher Liang, you're our only hope. Please save us. We'll starve without food. Liang Yu, supporting herself with her longsword, decided, then, I'll make a trip outside. Be careful on your own. Wu Chen Yu, the class monitor, had his own plans. Over the past month, he had observed the creature's behavior, toyed with its prey, and usually took only two or three students at a time. He had already selected a few expendable individuals to use as a diversion in case the creature attacked. As Liang Yu left the gymnasium, she was aware that the creature was likely nearby, waiting for an opportunity. She didn't venture far, determined to face the creature in a do-or-die battle. Today, either the creature or I will survive. If necessary, I'm prepared to sacrifice myself to take it down. Back in the gymnasium, Lu Karen continued to care for Yang Xingqin. Does your hand still hurt? Yang Xingqin looked at her only friend with gratitude. In this weather, I can hardly feel the pain. Lu Karen encouraged her with a resolute gaze. Believe that we can survive this. Don't give up hope. At this moment, another wave of mocking laughter came from behind. Really wishful thinking. Do you think you'll always be this lucky? I really don't see any point in you being disabled, living. If I were you, I would have ended it all by myself by now. Yet you're still here, disgusting everyone else. The other students also join in with their cold and hot mockery. You're just a burden, persisting like this. The next time the monster appears, it will be your end. Yang Xingxin remained silent. She was a girl not adept at arguing, except maybe online. Lu Karen couldn't stand it anymore and wanted to speak up for Yang Xingxin. But just as she looked up, she saw a huge shadow suddenly appear outside the window. She suddenly stood up and, pushing Yang Xingxin, yelled, run fast. At the same time, a large claw broke through the window, reaching in wildly. Wu Qingyu and others, although frightened, had already planned for this. He had rallied a few physically stronger classmates, grabbing a few unlucky ones to push towards the monster. The pushed students were instantly squashed into a pulp with a plop. The students were terrified and fled in panic. Outside the gymnasium, the monster had not noticed Liang Yu behind it. Liang Yu's eyes were sharp, and she held a long sword in her hand, charging fiercely towards the monster. By the time the big cat reacted, it was already too late. With a swoosh, a blade light harshly slashed across the big cat's neck. The big cat let out a piercing scream. The students, watching this scene, were too scared to move. They could do nothing but run behind teacher Liang, loudly cheering her on and encouraging her. Liang Yu also firmly blocked the entrance to the gymnasium, not giving the monster a chance to approach. Just then, Zhang Yi and others arrived at the entrance, following the noise. Their appearance caught the attention of both the person and the monster. Liang Yu's eyes suddenly lit up with hope. These are all strangers. They must have come from outside to rescue us. Thinking this, Liang Yu shouted, Quick, come over and help. Upon seeing a young and beautiful woman, Chun Lei was about to make a move, but her hand was held back by Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi watched the woman intently, realizing her exceptional combat skills. Such sharp swordsmanship was not something an ordinary person could achieve. She must be a powerful individual with special abilities. It was unclear whether she was a friend or foe. Most importantly, their goal was to find people, and there was no need to get involved in unrelated battles. The big cat was no good creature, and acting rashly could put all three of them at risk. Let's not meddle in others' affairs for now. Our priority is to find people. This woman seems capable enough to handle herself. Uncle Yu also noticed the situation, thinking that this woman could probably beat him too. Her swordsmanship looked painful even to watch. It was better to stay away from this woman. The three of them turned a blind eye and left directly. Liang Yu was speechless. They were all human.
humans, so why wouldn't they help fight the monster together? She angrily shouted, aren't you guys men? But the three continued to ignore her. Soon, with a bang, Uncle Yu kicked open the gymnasium door. The students screamed at first, but upon seeing three humans, they felt much more relieved. Zhang Yi quickly spotted the girl in the wheelchair. Good thing we arrived in time, or it would have been a wasted effort. Just then, Wu Chen Yu approached them. Are you from West Mountain Base? Did my father send you to pick me out? What is West Mountain Base? Zhang Yi heard this for the first time. Wu Chen Yu said, my father is Wu Jiangwo, the leader of Heavenly Sea City. You must be familiar with this name. Zhang Yi scoffed, never heard of it. He found the young man in front of him somewhat amusing. Although his clothes were expensive, he clearly hadn't bathed or changed clothes in two months, looking no different from a street beggar, yet still trying to act like a young master. The contrast was quite amusing, but Zhang Yi wanted to gather some information about West Mountain Base, a place he had heard about from Wang Siming and Su Hao. So, he asked, what do you know about West Mountain Organization? Tell us about it. Wu Chen Yu was a bit taken aback. Are you from another shelter? Then he mused to himself, West Mountain Base is the closest to the school, so why did they send you? Hearing this, Zhang Yi became interested. He was aware that Heavenly Sea City had several emergency shelters, but clearly, they were not the ones Wu Chen Yu mentioned. Recalling that Wang Siming had also mentioned something similar, Zhang Yi thought that there must indeed be higher level shelters in Heavenly Sea City, and not just one. Deciding to play along to see how much information he could get from Wu Chen Yu, Zhang Yi casually asked, What do you know about the shelters? Wu Chen Yu, not as naive as he seemed, immediately sensed something was off and waved his hand, saying, Been studying in this closed off school. When the snow disaster first started, I didn't think it would be this serious, or else I would have gone there earlier. Observing Wu Chen Yu, who looked more like a beggar than a rich young master, Zhang Yi thought that he probably didn't have any valuable information. After all, he had been trapped there for so long. If there was a way to contact the outside world, his influential father would have rescued him by now. Seeing Wu Chen Yu as no longer valuable, Zhang Yi ignored him and approached Yang Xingqin. The other students, seeing that Zhang Yi and his companions didn't seem like bad people, gathered around them, eagerly proposing offers. If you take me out, I can give you as much money as you want. My dad is the chairman of Chongming Group. I can even get my dad to arrange an official position for you, they said. Chun Lei and Uncle Yu looked embarrassed amidst these energetic young men and women. They felt somewhat reluctant to hurt these youths' feelings. Even a girl approached Uncle Yu, asking, do you have a partner? If your wife doesn't mind, I am willing to be the third party. However, they did not dare to speak as the decision lay with Zhang Yi. When Zhang Yi reached Yang Xinxin and confirmed her identity, he prepared to take her away. But Yang Xinxin stopped him, asking, can you do me a favor? Zhang Yi smiled gently and said, sure, as long as it's not something like saving your entire class. Yang Xinxin looked towards the corridor outside the gymnasium. Can you please stop them from continuing to fight? I'm worried it might be dangerous. Zhang Yi immediately sensed the underlying meaning. Just to stop them? Why not ask me to help your teacher? But Zhang Yi didn't want to probe further. After all, he would need her to help maintain cybersecurity in the future, and this was a good opportunity to earn her favor. He then gestured for Chun Lei and Uncle Yu to come over, and the three of them headed towards the outside of the gymnasium. At that moment, Liang Yi was fiercely battling with the big cat, with the cat's fur scattered all over the ground. Zhang Yi casually collected a few strands into his alternate space, thinking they might be worth studying later. He then gave Chun Lei a look, and he instantly understood, using his ice and snow abilities. A giant crack suddenly appeared above the corridor. In the next second, a massive collapse of ice and snow occurred, separating the person and the cat. The big cat vanished in an instant. Liang Yu, shaking with anger, turned and glared at Zhang Yi and Chun Lei, shouting, What are you doing? Chun Lei, frightened, quickly hid behind Zhang Yi, who casually replied, You don't need to thank me. It's only natural for humans to help each other. Liang Yu raised her long sword in fury. Why did you do that? I was about to subdue that monster. Why did you save it? She had been burning her physical energy for this final battle, ready to fight the big cat to the death. Now, she was furious at Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi appeared innocent. We wanted to help you, afraid that the monster might hurt you. Pointing at Yang Xinxin, he added, it was your student who asked me to intervene. Otherwise, do you think I would bother? As he turned to push Yang Xinxin, Liang Yu, unable to contain her anger, shouted for him to stop and, like lightning, swung her long sword towards him. Zhang Yi, seeing her murderous intent and feeling his safety threatened, knew he had to retaliate, regardless of the reason. He instantly drew his golden desert eagle. The gun's massive recoil made him step back. But what happened next stunned him. Liang Yu, with a swing of her long sword, created a fan-shaped afterimage, splitting the bullet in two. Zhang Yi was astonished. How is that possible? She split the bullet with her bare hands, but Liang Yu continued her relentless assault, swiftly moving towards Zhang Yi with her sword. Zhang Yi's mouth curved into a strange arc. Now, he quickly opened a dimensional gate in front of him. Liang Yu, realizing the danger too late, vanished into the gate. The massive inertia knocked Zhang Yi over. Chun Lei and Uncle Yu moved to help him, but Zhang Yi gestured for them to keep their distance. After about two seconds of having Liang Yu in the alternate space, Zhang Yi quickly reopened the dimensional gate to release her. Liang Yu lay on the ground, weakened, as time in the alternate space nearly stops, and staying there too
too long can be lethal. There was no need to be so ruthless in front of Yang Xinqin. Zhang Yi spread his hands with a hint of frustration. Why are you always so fierce? I tried to help you out of goodwill, and you treat it like an ungrateful act. Picking up Liang Yu's long sword lying nearby, he joked, to prevent any more trouble from you, I better keep this dangerous thing for now. Holding the long sword, he mused that it must be an extraordinary weapon, capable of splitting bullets, and thought it might be useful for cutting vegetables back at the shelter. Liang Yu struggled to get up, demanding, give me back my dragon's roar. Zhang Yi turned to the crowd and waved, can a few of you help your teacher to rest in the corner? Liang Yu, weak and powerless, was helped to a corner, continuing to utter threats feebly, who exactly are you? What are you doing here? Pointing at Yang Xinxin, Zhang Yi explained, she's the sister of my girlfriends, I came to take her away. Hearing this, Liang Yu's expression changed instantly, becoming pleading, then can't you take everyone with you? The students, seizing a lifeline, began to plead excitedly, take us away too. That monster has already eaten thousands of people in the school. My dad is a bureau chief. My dad is a department head. I can arrange whatever you want. Amidst the clamor, Zhang Yi, losing patience, raised his voice. Enough. I'm only taking Yang Xinxin. I can't be responsible for anyone else. I'm only taking my own family. You can contact your own families, can't you? The students became anxious, explaining that there was no phone signal and they hadn't been able to contact their families. Observing the state of Zhang Yi and his companions, along with their previous actions, Liang Yu realized they were extraordinary. She pleaded, please, save these lovely children. They are the future hope of our country. Hearing their pleas, Zhang Yi couldn't help but laugh. They've been raised with the finest education and born with silver spoons in their mouths. Children of high officials and wealthy magnates. Maybe they can score high marks. But what real contribution can they make to society? I haven't found any value in them. Are you sure you want to entrust the hope of a nation to these kinds of people? He waved his hand jokingly. I'm just a commoner. I can't save these elites. I'm only here to save my own family. As he prepared to leave with Yang Xinxin, a few students harbored malicious intentions and quietly approached her. Suddenly, one of them grabbed her neck. Lu Karen was also pinned down by a male student. Xiang Mingning, with a ferocious look, threatened, if you don't take us with you, I will strangle her right now. Liang Yu urgently tried to intervene. Stop it. We are all classmates. You can't do this. But they were deaf to Liang Yu's words, seeing her merely as a bodyguard. Zhang Yi, looking resigned, turned to Uncle Yu and Chun Lei and said with a laugh, they dare to threaten me. Don't they know the last person who threatened me is now under two meters of snow? While appearing casual, Zhang Yi had already switched to two police pistols and, without hesitation, fired four shots, dropping the four perpetrators. The surrounding students screamed in horror, having never witnessed such a scene. Liang Yu was also shocked, trembling as she said, these are just kids, how can you be so cruel, you monster? Zhang Yi scoffed, do you think they're still kids? They know how to take classmates as hostages, you call that childish? He ignored their moral blackmail and approached Yang Xinxin, who was now expressionless, evidently shocked by the recent events, but as long as her mind was still functioning, it shouldn't be a big problem after her sister talked to her. He then extended his hand towards Yang Xinxin, let's go, your brother-in-law will take you home. Yang Xinxin, snapping out of her daze, hesitantly said, can you also take my friend? She looked towards Lu Karen. Zhang Yi thought to himself that Lu Karen seemed like an innocent and naive girl. Although Lu Karen looked pretty, he didn't need someone just to eat his food. Seeing Zhang Yi's hesitation, Yang Xinxin quickly added, Lu Karen was also specially admitted like me. This school only admits two types of students, children of high officials and wealthy magnates, and geniuses recruited for their talents to enhance the school's reputation. Lu Karen is a genius in the field of mechanics, having won numerous awards, both domestically and internationally. Her abilities are on par with a PhD from MIT. This wheelchair I'm using was custom made for me by her. It's perfect. Hearing this, Zhang Yi took a second look at Lu Karen, realizing that his shelter could indeed use a skilled mechanic. The combination of their skills in hardware and software could offer endless possibilities. He then looked at Lu Karen seriously and asked, tell me, what value can you provide? Lu Karen's eyes lit up as she quickly responded, I have a deep understanding of automotive industrial design and maintenance, and I've also studied various firearms. If you take me with you, I can use my skills to modify cars and firearms for you. Plus, I've been studying forging techniques since I was young, so I'm also very skilled in crafting cold weapons. Anything you need, I can handle. Zhang Yi felt like he had found a treasure. He admitted that this girl had intrigued him. His shelter truly needed a talent like hers. Standing up and pushing Yang Xinxin's wheelchair, he feigned reluctance, but was inwardly delighted. For the sake of Yang Xinxin's sister, I'll take you with us. Lu Karen nearly jumped for joy, knowing that staying behind would mean enduring her classmates' harassment. This was her only chance for survival. She quickly and sensibly helped Zhang Yi with the wheelchair. Seeing Lu Karen earn Zhang Yi's favor through her abilities, other students started to crowd around, eagerly trying to promote themselves. Mr. Zhang, I can be useful too. I'm an excellent driver. I can drive for you. I'm fluent in eight languages. I can be your translator, they pleaded. While it was undeniable that there were indeed many talented individuals among the students, Zhang Yi struggled to see how their skills would be of use in the post-apocalyptic world. Suddenly, a long-haired 
red-haired girl bravely stepped forward from the crowd, blocking Zhang Yi's path. You can't just leave like this. Teacher Liang was close to killing that monster. It was your interference that allowed it to escape. If you're going to leave, at least help us deal with the monster first. She was Shen Miaoka, the class committee leader. Zhang Yi, holding his gun, spoke coldly. I admire your courage, but let me be clear. Whether I came or not, your fate would be the same. Death. Seeing his firm stance, the other students dared not say more. Before leaving, Yang Xingxin looked at Liang Yu. Teacher Liang, thank you for taking care of me all this time. Although none of her classmates were good people, Teacher Liang had indeed been a responsible and caring teacher. Yang Xingxin knew that Liang Yu would never abandon the other students to leave with them, so she didn't invite her. After Zhang Yi and his group had walked some distance, Liang Yu suddenly got an idea. Let's follow them. I'm severely injured, and that monster won't be in a good condition either. It probably won't dare to come out for a while. Following them, at least we can find a way out of here. So, they followed Zhang Yi's group from a distance. Chun Lei asked softly, is it okay for them to follow us like this? Zhang Yi scoffed, if you feel sorry for them, go save them. If you want to get rid of them, a slight effort from you would be enough to bury them all alive right here. Chun Lei was startled, they've done nothing to me, I couldn't do such a thing. Zhang Yi quickened his pace, when you're poor, you look after yourself, when you're rich, you can have many wives and concubines. I can't afford to take care of these pampered sons and daughters of privilege. Chun Lei nodded quickly, and soon they reached the surface. Zhang Yi turned to Chun Lei, you go with Uncle Yu on the motorcycle. Chun Lei appeared reluctant, it's going to be freezing. Zhang Yi handed him a helmet. You, an ice and snow ability user, are afraid of the cold? Wouldn't that be a joke to others? Chun Lei then realized it might not be so bad. It's been a long time since I've enjoyed a ride. As Zhang Yi gently placed Yang Xinxin in the front passenger seat, Lu Karen tactfully took the back seat. They then left Azure Sky Academy swiftly. Back on the surface, Liang Yu and her group, witnessing the departing vehicle, were stunned. Shen Miaoka, looking lost, asked, What should we do now? Everything around us is covered in snow. At least going back, we have shelter from the wind and snow. Wu Chen Yu stepped forward with a smile, unlocking his phone. Let me handle this. As expected, there's signal outside. He planned to contact his influential father to arrange for them to be taken to West Mountain Base. Inside the warm car, Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen were immersed in comfort. Zhang Yi waved his hand, and two bottles of drinks and some bread appeared before them. You must be starving. Go ahead and replenish some energy, but don't eat too quickly. We don't want any stomach issues, he advised. The girls, moved to tears, gratefully accepted the food. Brother Zhang, you're really kind, they said before eagerly beginning to eat. Once they finished, Zhang Yi started a conversation with them. Yang Xinxin, you're really impressive, he said, catching her off guard. How am I impressive? I've always been seen as a burden by everyone. If it weren't for teacher Liang and Lu Karen always protecting and taking care of me, I probably would have died long ago. Lu Karen quickly joined in. We're good sisters. No need to be formal. Zhang Yi smiled enigmatically. Anyway, I think you're definitely extraordinary. Despite being disabled from a young age, you've survived two months in the post-apocalyptic world under the threat of that monster. Once or twice could be attributed to luck, or Lu Karen's protection, but this long duration seems quite intriguing. I don't think it's just a coincidence. Am I right? Lu Karen looked confused, while Yang Xinxin's innocent smile gradually faded, replaced by a slightly disturbed expression. She responded, Brother Zhang Yi, you really are extraordinary. No wonder you've managed to survive so stylishly until now and even take care of my two clumsy sisters. Zhang Yi laughed, all these coincidences coming together, it's hard not to be suspicious, especially earlier, during the battle between Teacher Liang and the Big Cat. You only asked me to stop them, not to protect Teacher Liang. This suggests your goal might have been to protect that monster, without harming Liang Yu. So I deduce that the Big Cat is a pet you've raised, right? And your classmates are its living food, aren't they? Yang Xinxin's expression turned profound. Brother Zhang, you're indeed not simple, but you've only guessed about 60 or 70 percent correctly. I'm not as cruel as you imagine. I'm not the owner of Flower. I never thought of hurting my classmates. However, Flower has indeed been protecting me. At this, Lu Karen realized, Flower is the stray cat you used to feed, right? So the monster is Flower, mutated? Yang Xinxin confirmed this, explaining that Flower had never attacked them because of their previous connection. Lu Karen was in disbelief. Every time the monster appeared, it scared her so much she could barely stand, yet it never harmed them. She always thought they were just lucky. Zhang Yi's interest in the big cat grew. When he first arrived at Azure Sky Academy, it was difficult to locate Yang Xinxin, but the appearance of the big cat seemed to guide him, leading him quickly to the gymnasium. This high intelligence mutant animal, if tamed, could be an excellent asset, given that animals are often more loyal than humans. Looking at Yang Xinxin with a playful expression, Zhang Yi said, So you mean that the cat didn't attack you just because you had fed it and it felt grateful? I think there's more to it than that. Yang Xinxin's awkward smile revealed a deeper cunning. Brother Zhang indeed has keen insight. After mutating, Flower's intelligence evolved, and it even understands human language. I had informed it in advance that someone would come to pick me up and told it not to attack strangers rashly. Fortunately, Brother Zhang is powerful so no harm came to you. Zhang Yi pressed further. So, the deaths of your classmates
classmates were also orchestrated by you through the big cat. Yang Xinxin denied any direct involvement. There were indeed people among my classmates whom I disliked, but I never wished them dead. Most of them died because they had previously mistreated Flower when it was still a stray cat. Plus, Flower needed to feed. However, the situation gradually spiraled out of control. Many classmates started to distort their mentality, thinking I, as a disabled person, was dragging everyone down, even deliberately pushing me out as a human shield. As she spoke, Yang Xinxin's face twisted into a sinister smile. These ridiculous fools. They never realized that Flower would never harm me. Every time I survived unscathed, those with malicious intentions towards me grew more resentful. I enjoyed watching them hate me and ultimately meet their tragic end. Liu Karen fell silent, recalling the numerous narrow escapes, now realizing that everything indeed made sense. Yang Xinxin, playing with a bottle in her hand as if petting a cat, continued, so eventually, I stopped caring. The people who bullied me dying was better off. Later, Flower played with them, eliminating them one by one. I can't say it was entirely unrelated to me. Suddenly, she looked at Zhang Yi with anticipation. So, do you think what I did was cruel? Zhang Yi stared at her for two seconds. Cruel? This young lady is a kindred spirit. If it were me, I would have been far more ruthless. He then sneered. I came to rescue you solely because your sisters begged me, and because of your computer skills. I'm not concerned with the other matters. Yang Xinxin found his reasoning acceptable. After all, in this post-apocalyptic world, those without value were inevitably discarded. Zhang Yi shifted the conversation back to practical matters. As long as you follow my instructions and demonstrate your value in the team, I'll ensure you're well taken care of. That's not difficult for me. The girls, clearly impressed, continued their enthusiastic admiration. Zhang Yi then pondered another question. Yang Xinxin, if you had the means to contact the outside world all this time, why wait until now? And how did you solve the issue with the signal? Yang Xinxin smiled cunningly. Brother Zhang, I am one of the world's top hackers. Solving a signal issue is child's play for me, especially with Flower's help. As for contacting you, I never counted on my foolish sisters. You, Zhang Yi, were my target all along. This revelation left Zhang Yi feeling outmaneuvered in terms of intellect. The rescue he thought he was conducting had been a trap set by the genius girl. He asked, you say I was your target from the start, but we had no prior connection. How so? Yang Xinxin, with a hint of pride, explained, I thought my stepsister had died long ago. Given her dim-witted nature, she was only fit for the entertainment industry. I never expected her to save me. It was only when I started receiving some junk messages. While speaking, Yang Xinxin pulled out a cell phone from her pocket. This phone had a very unique design, unlike any model available on the market, suggesting it was a custom-made device. No wonder it had such powerful signal reception capabilities. Yang Xinxin continued, don't underestimate this phone in my hand. Its performance is comparable to a supercomputer. With just a flick of my finger, all your secrets are no secrets to me. As she said this, Yang Xinxin suddenly took on a love-struck expression. Brother Zhang, you are my idol. A mere warehouse manager, thriving in this post-apocalyptic world. Zhang Yi felt a chill down his spine, realizing the ease with which a top hacker like Yang Xinxin could access someone's secrets in this information age. Zhang Yi began to panic and asked uneasily, What do you know? Yang Xinxin, poking at her phone, confidently replied, You could say I know everything. From the Walmart theft to your bank transfer records, from building your safe house to almost killing the entire neighborhood, and then later going to the shelter in Su family town. As she spoke, Yang Xinxin's face turned red with excitement, her eyes filled with adoration. After reading your story, I just think you're so amazing, brother. You're like my idol. Zhang Yi, with a speechless expression, thought to himself, turns out she's a Yandera. I can't handle someone like this. Being involved with her could be either good or bad. He took a sharp breath and asked, so, you used your two sisters to contact me, asking me to save you? Yang Xinxin, acting cute, nodded, something like that. But even if you hadn't come to save me, I would have definitely come to you. Based on all your actions, I figured you were the cautious type. I wasn't sure if you'd come, but you did, and I'm so happy and touched. Hearing this, Zhang Yi started to doubt his life. He had always thought he was in control, only to fall into someone else's trap. This girl's cunning is terrifying, but such a person is better as an ally than an enemy. Then, with a smile, Zhang Yi asked, I can see you're close with that mutated cat named Flower. Does it completely obey your orders? Yang Xinxin shook her head. It seems you've never had a cat, brother. Cats can only be friends. If you're good to it, it will be good to you. But if you want to be its master, that's nearly impossible, especially with a stray cat. Zhang Yi sighed. Too bad. I thought if I could make this powerful cat mine, it would be perfect. Just then, a huge figure appeared in the rearview mirror, the mighty mutated cat. Zhang Yi muttered to himself, it seems this cat is quite attached to Yang Xinxin. Is it worried about its master? Zhang Yi couldn't help but feel secretly delighted. The big cat had indeed followed them. Although he knew that such stray cats were extremely difficult to tame and wouldn't easily trust humans, he had plenty of high-quality cat food and dried fish in his warehouse. Coupled with his relationship with Yang Xinxin, there was still a chance he could win the cat over. Seeing Flower chasing after the car, Yang Xinxin even opened the window. Even Lu Karen, who was initially terrified of this creature, started to find the cat cute. Soon, the group returned to the shelter. To 
thank Chun Lei, Zhang Yi gave him a pillow, which made him as happy as a 300 pound child. For Uncle Yu, Zhang Yi brought out two large barrels of refined oil, exactly what he needed. Both Uncle Yu and Chun Lei left happily, promising to help whenever needed in the future. After they parted ways, Zhang Yi led the two girls into the shelter. As soon as they entered, Liu Karen became so excited that she started crying, exclaiming, Brother Zhang, you are so amazing. This place is like heaven. It's hard to imagine such a happy place exists in a post apocalyptic world. Yang Xinxin also looked around with wide eyes, full of astonishment. Zhang Yi, patting Liu Karen on the shoulder, said, As long as you two behave and help me solve problems, you'll always have a place in this shelter. I'll make sure you're well fed and clothed. Suddenly, Yang Xinxin blushed and asked, Does helping you solve problems include personal matters? Zhang Yi was speechless. This girl really dares to ask, he thought. Oblivious Liu Karen didn't understand the implication. Zhang Yi then knelt down, pinching Yang Xinxin's cheek affectionately, and said, You're quite knowledgeable, aren't you? But don't feel pressured. Your main task is to maintain the shelter's cybersecurity. I won't force you into anything else. Zhang Yi knew his limits. Despite finding the girl attractive, he wasn't the type to fall for everyone he met. After hearing Zhang Yi's words, Yang Xinxin felt a sense of loss. She looked at her disabled legs and wondered if he was rejecting her because of her disability. Just then, Yang Mi rushed down from upstairs, excitedly shouting, Brother Zhang, you really saved Yang Xinxin. I'm so glad you're alive. She then grabbed Yang Xinxin's hand. You silly girl, why didn't you contact me earlier? Do you know how worried your sister was? Yang Xinxin abruptly shook off Yang Mi's hand, saying, What's the use of contacting you earlier? You're just an actress who became famous by exploiting men's fantasies. Do you need me to tell you your own worth? If I hadn't found out you were with Brother Zhang Yi, I wouldn't bother contacting someone like you. Yang Mi was visibly embarrassed, while Zhang Yi sat on the sofa, disinterestedly eating melon seeds, thinking to himself that the relationship between these cousins seemed rather strained. He understood why Yang Xinxin, a highly intelligent computer genius, would look down on a celebrity like Yang Mi, who gained fame through her physical appearance. Shou Kier, listening to their conversation, focused on the fact that Yang Xinxin referred to Zhang Yi as Brother Zhang Yi. She felt a pang of jealousy, knowing Yang Xinxin's high IQ of 180 made her respect for someone quite rare. Since when has she been so polite to anyone, she wondered. The shelter became lively with their arrival. After some introductions, it turned out that Liu Karen also came from a highly educated family, both parents being university professors. She was polite and complimented her two new sisters, praising their family's strong genes and their beauty, which made both of them quite pleased. Zhang Yi then stood up and patted Yang Mi, instructing her to prepare a meal to welcome the newcomers. He also asked Zhou Kier to prepare rooms for Yang Xinxin and Liu Karen. The girls went to take a bath, and soon, the meal was ready. After bathing, they seemed to look at Zhang Yi with more affection, grateful for his help and the comfortable home he provided. During the meal, Zhang Yi began assigning tasks. Yang Xinxin, from now on, you'll handle the shelter's cybersecurity. That's not too difficult for you, right? Yang Xinxin confidently responded, Don't worry, Brother Zhang Yi, I've got this. Then Zhang Yi turned to Liu Karen, who immediately tensed up and sat up straight, hands on her knees. Since you're an expert in mechanics, making weapons and ammunition shouldn't be hard for you, right? Zhang Yi looked intently at Liu Karen, who shyly replied, Well, it's not difficult for me, but I need specialized equipment, and ammunition materials are strictly controlled. It's hard for ordinary people to access them. However, if it's about making cold weapons, that's much simpler. With the right metal and forging equipment, I can handle it. Zhang Yi smiled faintly, No problem, come with me. He then led Liu Karen to a spacious room on the underground level. With a swift motion, he revealed a large array of heavy machinery. Zhang Yi wasn't very familiar with these machines himself. Take a look and see if these will be useful. If not, I have more, or I can find some from outside factories if necessary. Liu Karen's eyes lit up at the sight of the advanced equipment. These are no ordinary machines. Most are imported high-end equipment, costing millions. Excitedly, Liu Karen assured Zhang Yi, this is more than enough. There are a few machines that might not be useful, but I can dismantle them for parts. Despite her delicate appearance, as a genius in the field of mechanics, her knowledge was extensive, and her hands-on skills were exceptional. She flexed her well-toned biceps, reassuring him, don't worry, brother Zhang Yi, I've got this under control. Seeing her enthusiasm, Zhang Yi felt genuinely pleased. Since you're an expert in mechanics, you must be familiar with materials too. He then took out the long sword he had taken from Liang Yu. Could you check this for me? See if there's anything special about this long sword. Maybe it's some ancient divine weapon. When I took it, your teacher looked like he wanted to devour me. Liu Karen took the sword, her face alight with excitement as if she were examining a rare treasure. This is a masterpiece of modern cold weaponry, the dragon's roar. Liu Karen, with a sense of reluctance, sheathed the dragon's roar and excitedly explained, this sword, named Dragon's Roar, was personally forged by the greatest swordsmith, Yuan Lin. It's not an ancient divine weapon, but a pinnacle of modern technology. It's made from atom and alloy, a metal developed just 10 years ago, and the hardest material known so far. Zhang Yi couldn't help but marvel. Seems like my trip to Azure Sky Academy was indeed fruitful. Liu Karen continued.
discontinued. Adamant alloys hardness is comparable to the legendary vibranium, but it's extremely expensive to produce and not suitable for mass military manufacturing. When crafted by a master into a cold weapon, it can easily cut through iron and even split diamonds. This long sword is particularly exceptional. It was awarded to Teacher Liang as a high honor for bravely protecting a leader while serving as a bodyguard. It's of great significance to him, almost more important than her life. Holding the extraordinary sword, Zhang Yi felt secretly thrilled. No wonder that fierce woman could fight a demonic cat with her moral body. Having such a treasure for self-defense is perfect. As dinner time approached, Zhang Yi prepared a lavish feast to welcome Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen. They hadn't enjoyed a warm meal in a long time. At first, they ate modestly, but gradually their dining became more extravagant. Lu Karen, biting into a large piece of meat, mumbled, the school was actually quite well stocked. With only a few hundred teachers and students, it had numerous high-end cafeterias and a warehouse full of international ingredients. There were even several large convenience stores. Zhang Yi smiled faintly. The concept of such an elite school was beyond his understanding. Then Lu Karen looked at Zhang Yi with admiration. I'm so glad brother Zhang Yi came. In this cold weather, even with the school's supplies, we might have frozen to death eventually. Zhang Yi looked at Lu Karen with a brotherly gaze. You took shelter in the spacious gymnasium, huddling together for warmth, so it wasn't too cold. But now that you're here, just prove your worth, and I assure you'll be well fed and clothed. After dinner, everyone relaxed on the sofa while Zhang Yi turned on the TV. Among the few news broadcasts still airing, they received unsettling news. The extreme cold weather, persisting for two months, had caused global disruption. Regions were fighting fiercely for resources, and the concept of nation-states had all but collapsed. Some armed organizations had rapidly risen, using force to control resources and even enslaving survivors. This news undoubtedly cast a shadow of oppression over them. Zhang Yi grew tense, realizing the situation was worse than he had thought. Yang Mi, seeking comfort, clung to him and said anxiously, What should we do? I'm so scared. How did things suddenly turn out like this? Zhang Yi, maintaining his composure, replied, This was expected. Previously, these armed forces had some restraints, at least respecting decisions from national leaders. But now, everyone has realized that this ice age won't end soon, so they've become fearless in their actions, relying on their own military strength. Yang Xinxin added, It's like the rules and regulations of some organizations. They are there, and even if not everyone follows them, their existence deters extreme actions. But now, there's no order left. Zhang Yi nodded in agreement with Yang Xinxin and sighed. The only outcome is that local armed forces may transform into warlords. This means a warlord era is likely approaching soon. Once it reaches that stage, the lives of ordinary people will become as insignificant as grass. Then, he wheeled Yang Xinxin to the control room. Her eyes lit up at the sight of the massive supercomputer, resembling something out of a sci-fi movie. Zhang Yi patted her shoulder. The shelter's cybersecurity is now your responsibility. Yang Xinxin, transfixed on the holographic screen, nodded repeatedly. Zhang Yi, watching her intense focus, thought to himself, having such a high IQ computer genius, who is paraplegic, in this control room is perfect. He granted Yang Xinxin operational authority just below his own, ensuring she couldn't alter core system components, but could maintain network security. Yang Xinxin began to work her fingers like a pianist. Zhang Yi, standing behind her, couldn't understand what she was doing, but felt impressed by her expertise. In just two minutes, Yang Xinxin completed a thorough check of the shelter's entire network. She paused her work and shared her analysis. This system was the world's most advanced personal network system a decade ago, and remains top tier even now. Its artificial intelligence is incredibly powerful, capable of self-repairing vulnerabilities, theoretically leaving no security loopholes. Her tone shifted, however, that's true only for ordinary hackers. Top hackers can still find vulnerabilities. In these past 10 days alone, there have been thousands of attempted network attacks. Had I not arrived, I estimate your firewall would have been breached in a couple of weeks, crippling the entire shelter. Zhang Yi felt a chill hearing this. I was right to be concerned. After the Lu Fengdai incident, the shelter has probably been under surveillance, and the attackers are no ordinary people. Anxiously, Zhang Yi asked Yang Xinxin, can you fend off these attacks? Yang Xinxin smirked confidently, brother Zhang Yi, I am a world-class top hacker. Cybersecurity is my forte, not to mention offensive hacking. The attackers might be skilled, but to me, they're just amateurs. I'll start by setting up basic defenses, creating a new encrypted network. We can't use the old routers anymore since wireless networks are the easiest to breach. Within a few minutes of efficient work, Yang Xinxin turned back to Zhang Yi and triumphantly declared, Brother, I've done it. Her beaming face seemed to say, Praise me now. Zhang Yi, understanding the cue, smiled and gently patted her head. Yang Xinxin, you're truly impressive. Then, Yang Xinxin turned back to her work, a hint of disdain on her face. Let's see who dares to invade my network. Now it's my turn to invade theirs. As a top-level hacker, constantly tackling more challenging tasks was her instinct. Zhang Yi, still cautious, advised, If you're not sure, it's better to just protect our own network. There's no need to take unnecessary risks. However, his curiosity about the organization's spying on them was 
peaked. If you can gather some intelligence about them, try it. Yang Xingxin assured him with a smile. Don't worry, brother. Judging by their previous attempts, they are nowhere near my level. Even if I can't breach their network, I can at least mask my own tracks. They won't be able to trace me. Just then, Zhou Kier burst into the control room, her voice trembling. There's a monster outside the shelter's door, as tall as a building. Zhang Yi and Yang Xingxin exchanged a glance and chuckled. Seems like your cat really can't let go of you. It even found its way here. Yang Xingxin tilted her head. Flower trusts only me now. It must be worried and followed me here. Zhang Yi contemplated. This might be the perfect opportunity to tame it. We need to do it, or the people across the river at Su Family Town might be in danger. With this in mind, Zhang Yi wheeled Yang Xingxin out of the control room. Zhou Kier, pale with fear, clung to Zhang Yi for comfort. There's a huge cat, lying outside the window, staring inside. Lu Karen said we need Yang Xingxin to come out. Zhang Yi reassured her, it's okay. This big cat is a friend of Yang Xingxin. He then pushed Yang Xingxin towards the floor-to-ceiling window. Flower lay quietly in the snow, seemingly without malice, occasionally meowing as if asking for food. Upon seeing Yang Xingxin, it closed its eyes, appearing tired, and began to doze off. It seemed to have been waiting there for a while, covered in a layer of snow. Zhang Yi thought, this cat must be exhausted from its fight with Liang Yu, with many sword wounds on its body. Now it's tired, hungry, and in pain. This might be the best time to tame it. Deciding this, Zhang Yi prepared to take Yang Xingxin outside. Let's go feed this poor big cat. When Yang Xingxin appeared, the big cat indeed showed a look of joy. However, upon seeing Zhang Yi behind her, it cautiously stepped back. After all, they had faced each other directly when they first arrived at Azure Sky Academy. Zhang Yi noticed the big cat's weariness and immediately opened a portal to another dimension. With a whoosh, heaps of cat food and dried fish fell out. Zhang Yi picked up a bag of cat food and began to tease the big cat, saying, Wanna try some? It's chaotic outside now. Why don't you become my pet? I have plenty of this cat food. The big cat stared intensely at the cat food in Zhang Yi's hand, unable to stop swallowing its saliva. Zhang Yi was secretly pleased, thinking, it's just a cat after all. It's not hard to deal with as long as there's food, but he was quickly proven wrong. The big cat suddenly stood up, its eyes instantly becoming alert as if to say, you think you can tame me with just a bit of cat food? You're underestimating me. Yang Xinxin, sitting in a wheelchair, smiled and said, Brother Zhang Yi, stray cats are much more cautious than pet cats. It took me several months to become friends with it. Zhang Yi had plenty of time to build trust with the big cat. He was just worried it might attack the village across the river. He wasn't concerned about the lives of the people in Su family town, but was afraid of spoiling his relationship with Chun Lei, since it was they who had lured the cat here. After some thought, Zhang Yi said to Flower, although you don't trust me yet, I can still provide you with food. In return, you have to promise not to attack the villagers across the river. Can you do that? The cat, indeed intelligent, quickly understood Zhang Yi's request and nodded happily. Having reached an agreement, Zhang Yi returned to the shelter, thinking there was plenty of pet snacks in the other dimension to feed the creature. However, with such a large cat, those snacks wouldn't last long, so he would need to find other food to feed it in the future. Just as he returned to the living room, he heard Zhou Kier and Yang Mi's surprised and delighted exclamations. Zhang Yi looked out the window to find the big cat had disappeared. Zhou Kier excitedly pulled Zhang Yi to look at the pile of cat food. Zhang Yi widened his eyes in surprise. The creature could change its size at will. The originally over 10 meter long giant mutant cat had turned into a normal sized tabby cat. Zhang Yi was quite pleased as this would save a lot on food. That's when Lu Karen suddenly realized something, explaining, if it has always been this size, our deceased classmates wouldn't have been enough to fill its stomach, right? Yang Xingxin also analyzed, saying, every time flower appears, it's very sudden, which is completely illogical. With such a large size, it's impossible to be so silent, even avoiding detection by a master like Teacher Liang. All signs indicate that it has always been able to change its size at will. Suddenly, Yang Xingxin furrowed her brows in worry and said, there seems to be blood on flower. Zhang Yi immediately bent down for a closer look. Indeed, there is a cut on flower's body. Although the blood is frozen, the wound looks quite deep. This must be the injury inflicted by Liang Yu's dragon's roar. No wonder it looks so listless, but Flower doesn't seem to care much about this wound. After all, for a stray cat, such injuries might not be a big deal. Zhang Yi pondered for a moment. It seems I should prepare some medicine for it tomorrow and take the opportunity to build some trust, but I definitely can't go now. Cats are very wary when eating and could see me as a threat to their food. Of course, I can't let Yang Xingxin do it either, as I need to build a good relationship with the cat myself. That night, Yang Xingxin and Lu Karen shared a room. Lu Karen, lying in the warm, spacious room, joked with Yang Xingxin, Am I dreaming? This morning we were freezing and starving in a snow cave, and now we're in a heavenly room. Yang Xingxin smiled gently. All this is thanks to brother Zhang Yi. He's my idol. To have such a super shelter in this post-apocalyptic world. Hearing this, Lu Karen clenched her fists with resolve. I must prove my worth in the future and not disappoint brother Zhang's care for me. Curious, Yang Xingxin asked, What did you do today? Lu Karen excitedly replied, I familiarized myself with the equipment. Next, I might need to craft some weapons.
weapons. However, brother doesn't seem to lack conventional firearms. Bullets and bombs might be more useful to him, so I'll focus on researching these kinds of weaponry. Liu Karen, grateful and aware of the debt she owed, spent the whole night contemplating Zhang Yi's potential needs. Early the next morning, Liu Karen shared her ideas with Zhang Yi, which coincided with his own thoughts. Zhang Yi also felt that the traps outside were too rudimentary. They might deter the brutes from Su family town, but were inadequate against more organized groups. Therefore, landmines and explosives were precisely what he needed. Liu Karen confidently assured him, no problem, leave it to me. After Zhang Yi and his group left Azure Sky Academy, Liang Yi led the students to the surface. Wu Chinyu, elated, took out his phone to call his father, Wu Jianwo, for rescue. The signal was stronger on the surface, and he soon contacted his father. After learning about their situation, Wu Jianwo told them to stay put and not move, as he would arrange for someone to come for their rescue. The students cheered at the news, thrilled at the prospect of leaving the dreaded place. Some also tried contacting their families, but received no responses, leading them to fear the worst for their loved ones. However, some students felt a sense of unease. They wondered why Wu Chingyu's father, if he had the capability to rescue them, hadn't come to search for them earlier. Why wait until now? And if he didn't have the ability to save his son, why would he promise to do so? These questions also left Liang Yu extremely puzzled. 